So I got to wondering at the weekend, how hard would it be to make a Spotify client to use while I'm coding? So I can just fire up Emacs and be coding and quickly reach out and queue up a new track or a new album. The answer is it's actually really easy. I needed a bit of research and I turned up two facts. The first is that Spotify has a web API that you can find out about here. And it basically boils down to running this, this query and you get JSON back. And the other is that I can queue up a track from the command line provided I have Spotify's reference. And I can do that with this command. So let's start there. We'll start by turning this into um, an Emacs list function that will play the track. So, like that. Let's take out that bracket. And then let's pull out the arguments to that. Oop. Um, missing a single quote there. That should be the right shape of command. I'll just put some quotes around that. That looks good. Let's see if it works by running that as a shell command. Looks good. I just stop that before um, copyright lawyers jump in. Let's turn that into um, a function. That should do it. Oh. And let's just save that. That could be handy for bug debugging later. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's part one. We can now play tracks provided we have their reference. The next step is to go off to the web and get hold of these hrefs. We can do that by having a look at this URL here. We're going to need a couple of packages to support it. Um, one's for grabbing URLs, and the other is for parsing JSON. Uh, it, the URL one is built in. The JSON one you'll actually need to go off and download, which you can do with something like package install JSON. Uh, I've already run that, so I won't bother. Uh, let's evaluate those so they're definitely in scope. And let's have a look at getting hold of this URL. The function we need is called URL retrieve uh, synchronously. Let's have a look at what that does it returns a buffer. Okay, what buffer does it return? Headers, data. Okay, that's a little bit annoying to work with, but to be honest, it's the only thing that's painful in this. Let's do some magic. With that buffer as the current buffer, we need to do something. What do we need to do? We need to go past the headers. which we can use that. And then we can call the JSON function JSON read object. And that bit of black magic should give us um, an Emacs list structure that represents the search query. Yeah, that's looking right. Good. Um, so now let's turn that into a function and see what data we've got to play with. Let's have another format string. Let's get rid of miles there. And replace him with a string placeholder. And let's wrap that all in a Spotify search function. Good. Once again, let's set up a dummy variable with some data we can play around with. 
Spotify search. Who should we have next? The Talking Heads. And let's have a look at that data. It's going to be pretty big. When we pretty print that, I'm expecting it to be fairly large. Okay. Now that's going to come up in the messages buffer. So, what do we have? This is going to be an association list. So, converting the JSON across to ELIST, we're going to end up with a list of pairs where the head is the key of the object and the, um, the tail is the value. So, looks like we've got some info metadata. And then lots of track data. Interesting. Let's have a look. Um, there's an info key. Yeah, good. Um, do that. Good. Uh, what else can we do? Let's have a look at... I've had a look on the web version of the query and I know that one of the keys is track. And the type of that is a pair. The head of that pair will, of course, be a symbol, which is tracks. And the CDR, however you pronounce that, will be the actual data we're interested in. And it will be a vector. OK, what's the first element of that vector look like? Ooh, that's pretty printed. OK. It looks like the track has a name and an href and some other stuff. That's all we'll need for now. So, we could do interesting things like take the name of that, it's Psycho Killer, and take the href of it, it's a Spotify track. Cool. That looks like we've got all our data ready. Now we need to put a front end on it, and that's where we'll use Helm. If you haven't seen it, Helm is uh, a kind of search and act on things interface. Uh, it kind of looks like this. This is one for browsing Emacs commands. I can hunt through them. I can look for interesting ones using uh, search terms. And then I can take actions on them. Often there's only one action. And it's really cool, you can use it for all kinds of quick textual front-end inter front interface stuff. And the way you use it is like this. You call the Helm function with some data sources. Uh, by convention you name them Helm, Source, and yeah, we'll have Spotify. And then what does a source look like? it looks like um, an association list, a list of key-value pairs. One of the keys is name, and you can call it Spotify, like that. If we evaluate that variable and then call the Helm function with it as a source, eh, it's not that interesting. We need some candidates. Candidates are the list of things that Helm is going to show us. And that, again, is an association list. So, some kind of name attached to some kind of data. If we run those, it's displaying Dave and Steve, but if we actually took an action on those, it would pass us back the associated value, so one or two. So how do we tie that into Spotify? Well, it's not too hard. We need to replace this static list with a call to a function. And that function needs to return a list of these pairs, a display name and some actual useful data. Well, that's going to be easy. Let's define a function. And that function, for now, will take no arguments and it will return all the tracks 
as name track data pairs, which we can do by mapping across the list of tracks. We'll have some kind of function that takes a track and it needs to return that pair, so um, let's make up another function. Okay, so we're going to have to create a function format track for display. We'll have to pass this function over the list of tracks, which, if memory serves, should be um, hundred tracks. Yeah, so it's that data. So let's stick that in. And let's have a look at that. So, if we actually ran that function, what would the head be? Format track for display needs to be defined. Of course it does. It's going to take a track object, and for now let's just return the name. Da, 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 da. That looks about right. That looks to me like a display name and some metadata. Shall we test it? Yeah. Woo! That's looking pretty good. So, now if I were to hit return, it would send that track data off to whatever action I defined. Well, I haven't defined an action, so let's do that. Actions in Helm are another list of key value pairs, um, and they sort of look like this some display name, and then some function that will take the data attached to the item and just invoke it. So in our case, we're going to want an action called play track and it's going to get the track data object so it's going to be a function that looks like this it will get a track and we've already got a function that can play hrefs so we just need to get the href out of the track. Okay, that's easy. So, that and that reevaluated. And, with a bit of luck, I have the option to play the track. If I hit return. Ah, no. Sorry, there's a mistake there. I'm returning the track when I should be playing it. What do we call that function? Spotify play href. Let's try that. Yep, that's got it. So the last thing to do is we're actually hard coding the band there. We need to make this interactive. So, let's tidy up as we go. Um, sample results, that's a problem. We don't want to use the sample results, we want to use the actual search track. So, we can call Spotify search, and what search term do we use? Well, there's a dynamic variable called Helm pattern, which is the thing that the user is currently typing in Helm to search for. And then we need to add a couple more things to the source. We need to say that this is volatile which means that the data will change. Don't cache the data, assume it's going to change dynamically. And let's try that. Miles. That's a good one to have. Yeah, okay. I think that's working. 
From there, there are a couple of cool things we can do. I'll just show you one. Um, if you run Helm uh, describe Helm attribute, you get a list of all the cool things you can do with Helm. I'm not going to go through them all. There are just too many. But that's a good way to explore what you can do. One I will do is add in multi-line. Re-evaluate that. And then... I'm going to change our format function so it displays this. Uh, da, ba, ba. Da, da, da. Boing, da, boing. And then I happen to know that I can do that. Now if I rerun it, I get both the track name and the album name, which is quite fun. Um, but that will do for now.